What's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here with a preview for the AT&T Byron Nelson, which is going to be interesting this week because we have a brand new course on the PGA Tour. And when that happens, it's like when cats meet dogs. You, you never really know what to expect. Uh, could be chaos. They could snuggle. Who the hell knows? Uh, but we're going to find out this week. And before we do that, I do want to jump back to last week because um, I get a lot of questions about this. So let's let's jump back to the Players' Championship. And just to show you what my ownership was in the... Uh, this is just the $3 birdie. This is the tournament that I've won in the past. Um, I get a lot of questions about this, so I, I figured I'd just show you. I basically go with a very, very uh, heavy core, right? So I pick six guys in my core lineup. And then I essentially swap each of them out a handful of times. So here is the starting lineup, so to speak. Finau, Sergio, Phil, Reed, Webb, and Stenson in essentially every single lineup you'll see. Um, they just get subbed out here across the board. Um, quite honestly, this, is, this was a pretty good core to start with. Uh, we had the winner in every single lineup. Awesome. Uh, Stenson, Reed... Sergio and Finau all made the cut. They kind of fell back on the weekend, but they all made the cut. The one that hurt here was Phil. Uh, whiffed on Phil, who finished close to dead last, which, uh, you know, kills a lot of these lineups. But still, actually, um, just for a reference point, because we did have the winner in so many lineups with Webb running away with it, I think the return on this was something like $64 on the $60 buy-in for this birdie. So I get a lot of questions about that. Um, here's what I had in that one specific contest, which I... I was very, very happy with outside of the Webb Simpson stuff. All right, let's turn our attention to this week and the Byron Nelson, a new course on the PGA Tour. This course, it is Trinity Forest, which, by the way, is kind of ironic. There's not a single tree on the course. There is not a single water hazard on the course, and there is basically no rough on the course. Um... It is less than two years old. I think it opened for play October 2016. And what are we looking at here? Well, um, I can show you a little bit, uh, a little bit of this course here. Just to kind of show you what, what you're dealing with here, you've got uh, essentially these, you know, high fescue areas. Everything is going to run off the side of the greens. Again, there you see it. Not a single tree out here. Look at this. Uh, strategically placed bunkers, those greens. Let's see if I can go back here. How good am, how good am I on YouTube? Everything is going to be running off the sides of it. Um, a really interesting course. It's being described almost like a, a Lynx course, like you'd see for something like the Open Championship. Um, Jordan Spieth described it as the as an American Lynx course, which is kind of an interesting way to frame it. But you'll see um, it's going to open up a lot of different options for this week. So... With that being said, um, there's going to be a lot of guessing, right? We don't have any course history. We don't have any uh, metrics for, for correlation like I usually do with key stats. So we're going to have to look at a few different things and make a lot of assumptions. So let's get into this. Jordan Speed 11,900. Sorry, this is the cheat sheet. It's available on DFS On Demand. Jordan Speed 11,900. He's 5-1 to one to win this thing. I will be potentially, well, Jordan Spieth will certainly be in my core. I think he's probably going to be in every single one of my lineups. Um, I will just bite the bullet and roster him like crazy here. I don't think 11,900 is enough. So when you're only five to one and the next closest guy in the field is 16 to one to win this event, you should be priced more than 11,900. We have seen times this year where whether it's DJ, whether it's Rory, whether it's Speed himself be priced at 11.9 or higher and not have these good of odds to win the event. So a few things. Yes, Jordan Speed finished 41st at the players after fading on Sunday, but he put it all together on Saturday with one of the best rounds on the course. That was pretty much completely overshadowed by Tiger Woods uh, flying up the leaderboard. It's really interesting because Jordan did not have good course history here in the past, but we're getting away from we're getting away from it. We have a new course this week. We have Trinity Forest, uh, which all opens up a lot of volatility. Right? There's going to be guys learning it for the first time. Um, newcomers are going to have uh, a bigger edge than they would in a normal week because no one's ever seen this course before. And Jordan Spieth compared this course to Royal Birkdale. I don't know if you guys are paying attention. 
That was the host course for the Open Championship in 2017, where your champion was Jordan Spieth. So if you take his word for it, and it's a similar course, we're going to be all over Spieth this week and happy about it. Quite honestly, um, we'll get to the we'll get to the stats in a second, um, but let's let's continue down on the cheat sheet here. All right, uh, Sergio Garcia, um, a little bit too expensive for me. So again, I had him in every single lineup last week. You love it in these in these weaker fields where you get an opportunity to roster Sergio, but coming off the miscut at the Masters, coming off the miscut at the Valero Texas Open, to me, he looked very unengaged at the Players' Championship. Of course, that's just an anecdote. He's won this tournament in the past. Again, not the same course, but Sergio looks a little unmotivated at the moment. 10100 is a little steep for me to pay when there are better options down below, like Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker 20 to 1 is better odds to win than Billy Horschel, who is priced $200 uh, more. And Horschel's your, uh, your defending champion. Again, different course. But Jimmy Walker's no schlub, right? So if you're just looking at, you know, a Texas event, right? We know what Billy Horschel, or I'm sorry, Jimmy Walker has had great success in Texas during the, the course of his career. He's coming off two top four finishes, you know, three straight top 20s. Jimmy Walker has won major championships before. We know this guy can play in any field, and he's and he's hot at the moment, right? I, th- I just think he's undervalued. This is a great place for him. Jimmy Walker, again, will be in quite a few of my lineups moving forward. Who else do we have here? Adam Scott. <laughs> you know, we talked about him a lot, and I, I told you I'd go down on the ship with him. He kind of paid off a bit. At the players for us, he's back to that almost anchoring stroke on the greens. And it's very close to anchoring, but maybe it's giving him that same feel as when he was anchoring the putter and, pl- and playing much better. An 11th place last week, his game is clearly coming around. I, I don't know if I love him at $9,200, but compared to his peers, I think you could uh, you could make quite the argument for him. All right, who else do we have here? A couple guys that might fly under the radar. Let's see. Um, Aaron Wise, a second place the last time he's teed it up. A, a little bit volatile for my liking, but I couldn't I couldn't blame you if you wanted to roster him. Who else might be hot coming in here? Oh, um, you're going to see a, a lot of Joaquin Neiman this week. I think that's okay. Missed the cut at the Wells Fargo. Uh, showed his chops at the Valero Texas Open back in Texas now. Gets another crack at only 7800 bucks. That's a pretty good price. I think I actually think the pricing's pretty steep this week. So you get a lot of guys over 9000 and then it kind of like I don't know. To see to see Neiman at 7800 bucks, to see how many names down here are under 8000, I don't know what that is compared to a typical week. I could go back and look, but it just feels like there's a lot more names under 8000 this week. Um, Ryan Palmer, again, I feel like every time you're in Texas, Ryan Palmer's name pops up. Um, we, we, when we get to the Vegas odds, you'll see, but you know, 7,800 bucks at 66 to one is better than his peers coming off a of 23rd place at the player's championship. You could do much worse than him. Johnson Wagner, two top twenties in his last two. Who else do we have here? Oh, there is, um, I think his name's TJ Vogel. Um, let me let me give the right shout out here. So TJ Vogel, this is from Will Gray of the Golf Channel made a note on this. TJ Vogel uh, Monday qualified today. So today's Monday. Uh, Vogel shoots a 66 to get into the Byron Nelson field. He hasn't been added to DraftKings, which I believe they do. So keep an eye out if TJ Vogel gets in this field. Um, he's probably going to be pretty cheap. He's... This is the fifth time he's Monday qualified this year, which is, first of all, a pretty amazing accomplishment, something that Patrick Reed had had to do a ton in his career. Um, the last two times he Monday qualified were the Valspar and the Wells Fargo. Made the cut at both of those, a T-16 at the Valspar, a T-59 at the Wells Fargo. So at least a guy who is going to be very, very cheap, I assume, if he gets into this field. And, um, you know, shot a 66, gets in, and then you know, has, has taken advantage of his Monday qualifyings in the past. All right. If we're really desperate down here, 
um, just on recent form, because that's really all we're looking at right now, right? We don't, you know, we have tournament history, but it's not course history. If we're just looking for cheap options that might spout off, I mean, I guess Putnam has two top tens in his last four starts, but one of those was in a really weak field at Corrales. Okay, let's flip to the tour stats page because I think this is probably where we're going to be able to find some value. So unfortunately, this week could not do the correlation that we would normally run. No course history, no idea what to expect. Just using a lot of interviews, um, looking, doing a little research, trying to figure out what, figure out what the heck is going to go on here. These uh, fairways are going to run out, maybe 50 yards. Um, it's going to open up options for long hitters, for short hitters. It should level the playing field a little bit. Everything rolls off uh, the greens, so your second your second shots are going to be going have to be very, going ha to have to be very accurate. Excuse me, jeez. And then. Um, Actually, Stephen Bodich made a really good point here. So I want to read a, 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 read a tweet from Bodo. Um, actually, I'll see if I can bring it over here. Can we do this? Yeah. So he says, love Trinity Forest. Suits every type of player. That's nice to know. Um, here we go. Greens are somewhat receptive. This is the point I want to make here. Putting around the greens is near impossible as they've let the greenside grass grow more than usual. Bring short game and precision iron game. I will take Bodo's word for it on this one. So what I've done is I've I've taken our SFDA stat, which I love, our birdie or better stat for DraftKings scoring, and then I added strokes gained off the tee, strokes gained approach, and strokes gained around the green as our three other stats that we're going to look at this week. I hate having an opinion in this, but I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm sticking with, this, with some of the standard items, but ones that I, I really think are going to correlate this week. So let's look at this. SFDA, again, this is a, a, a strokes uh, against the field stat on a per round basis. Uh, Jordan Spieth, by far the leader in this stat in this field, far and away against uh, above the rest of these guys. If we do a quick little math here, like, so Spieth is what, 0.54 ahead of the, uh, the guy in second, which is Leishman, which is basically the same difference between Leishman and what, like Adam Scott, basically. So the next, I don't know, 15 guys. Jordan Spieth lapping the field here. You get a couple of interesting guys like Martin Laird um, hasn't played a ton of tough fields, I would imagine, but I'd really have to go back and look. But he pops off here. Uh, Aaron Wise is a guy that we mentioned who has been playing well recently. Scott Piercy, we're going to see his name somewhere else as well. Then we also get someone like Jimmy Walker who fits fits the mold a bit as well. Birdie or better just because it is DraftKings scoring, but also if there's no win this week, it would appear this course is going to be gettable. Um, there was a college event here. Let me see if I can find this. The Texas State Open was played here as a bit of a trial run. This is from PGA Tour. This is Rob Bolton. I actually, I'm a big fan of Rob. Um, looks like this course was kind of smoked a bit, okay? Uh, it played as a par 70. The winner ran away with it 18 under. Basically, if there's favorable conditions, this course is going to be really gettable. Um, wind is is the big defense here, so we'll see as the as the weather forecast comes along. But you you, my point is you're probably going to have to make a lot of birdies to to contend this week. And we get a couple of these guys, right? Spieth again, number one in the field. Then you get the usual suspects like Grayson Murray. But here's Aaron Wise again. Here's Keith Mitchell who has. At, you know what? At 7800 bucks, we're probably going to have to play Keith Mitchell. Let me see if I can find Mitchell real quick. All right, so here's Keith Mitchell for the last 365 days. One, two, three, four, five, six straight cuts made. And what's that? Like, he's made basically 12 of his last 13. You can see... Last week of the players was basically his worst, worst DraftKings finish, which, which was 77 points. Everything before that, or I'm sorry, which was 44 points. Everything before that, 71, 75, 66, and then these two big ones here um, back in March and, and April. So Keith Mitchell at that price and having an elite stat like birdie or better, and then we're going to get him strokes gained off the tee here in a second. Keith Mitchell's probably going to have to be a staple in my lineups as well. Um, we'll see what the rest of the industry does 
with Mitchell, but that's going to be probably hard to avoid. All right, strokes gained off the tee. Mitchell number one, Palmer and Spieth in here as well. Anybody else? Billy Horschel, defending champion. Again, not the same course. Aaron Wise continues to pop up. Uh, Grayson Murray, Sam Saunders on here as well. Strokes gained approach. Piercy Garcia, Jordan Spieth. Ever heard of him? Uh, anybody else? Walker again. I mean, so you can see when the same names start popping up, you'd expect these guys to find success. This one opens up a little more volatility. If you wanted to go and take a value guy here, man, I wouldn't really feel comfortable with a lot of these guys. James Hahn, maybe. Oh, man, I really wouldn't feel comfortable rostering some of these guys who just have not put up the the finishes this year. And then around the green, so if you are going to miss those greens, uh, we'll, again, we'll take Bodo's word for it and see you know, if, if this plays into it this week. So Matsuyama, surprisingly, um, up here as well. And uh, Spieth pops up. Leishman, no surprise there. Martin Laird, I guess. So so Laird again, uh, that's probably three categories he's pretty good in. If you're looking for somebody down there, I guess you could do worse worse than Martin Laird. Not seeing any other guys that I'd feel super comfortable rostering here either. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's flip it back to the cheat sheet and we'll just sort by odds and see what we can find here. All right, so um, speed five to one, far and away the favorite to win this thing. Adam Scott of the 25 to one guys, oh, I guess Adam Scott and Leishman are the cheapest. Here's one. Kevin Na, 66 to one, only $7,200. Same odds to win as Grayson Murray. Although Murray does make a lot more birdies, so he's probably better in DraftKings scoring. Summer Hayes, for some reason, pops off here. I don't know what the what the big secret is in Vegas, but he's only 80 to 1, which Russell Knox is as well. And Russell Knox is a full thousand dollars cheaper. So not sure what that discrepancy is, but Vegas is has got uh has got Summer Hayes at 80 to 1. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, Laird, I guess if you're in the 50 to 1 range, you know, Laird again here, $1,000 cheaper than Brand Snedeker, same odds to win. So there you go. We've got a brand new course this week. What stats are you looking for? Have you done any research on Trinity Forest? If you have, shoot me a note, tweet me. It's at DFS On Demand or leave a comment below. Talk to you guys soon. See ya.